guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video. Today we're going to be using some of my favorite things, um, Spring Wreath, the Stamps and Dies, and then Bunny Wishes, the Stamps and Dies. First of all, I know this is a spring card and I don't care because it's my card and I can make whatever I want. Um, I <laughs> am just, um, I've been making a lot of Christmas cards and like snow themed cards and stuff and I just need some flowers to break it up because it makes me happy and you know, that's why I do card making because it makes me happy. So before we get into the card too much, uh, I just wanted to let you know that my favorite things is having a sale. I will link, it is an affiliate link um, in the video below. They um, they are having a 30% off everything except for the new category uh, up until December 31st of this year. And then they also have 75% off their products that they're retiring. So there's lots of good deals going on over there. Um, I have not done any shopping yet, but I will be doing it shortly. Um, so I can make sure that everything is not sold out. So here, I just wanted to try, you know, to do something different. I was looking, as you guys know, watching my videos, I've been looking for things that are a little bit faster. And while colored pencils do tend to take me a little bit longer, I tried to choose um, stamps that I knew weren't going to be super time consuming. So that's how I kind of put this idea together, like to add the little bunnies to the wreath. I think the wreath is such a good base um, for so many different things in card making. That's why there's so many wreath stamps, right? So I am stamping on uh, gray cardstock. This is um, actually Ellen Hudson's and I really like it. It's a it's a nice thick good cardstock. Um, and I'm stamping in my ink on three um, fade out ink. I am stamping them twice just because I wanted to make sure I had a good line to follow. I've never used this on colored cardstock and so I wasn't really sure um, once it dried how well I was going to be able to see it but it worked beautifully. It was really easy for me to see the lines and um, you know do my detail coloring with the colored pencils. This particular image was super easy for me to be able to do the no line coloring um, with less experience doing this particular technique. And I don't have a ton um, because I like my, my <laughs> big bold black outlines. Um, but I do think that this is a really pretty technique um, and gives you kind of a different look. And really in order to become a better card maker, you have to, well, become better at anything. You have to kind of challenge yourself. And so it's good to do, for me, to do these things every once in a while, um, just to kind of show or learn different, you know, I don't want to say different techniques, but just for, to, for me to learn about myself, like what, what I do like, what I don't like, what does work, what doesn't work. And you're not going to learn it unless you do it. I hope that makes sense. Um, so before I'm obviously going to color the card. You're going to see this. It's all going to be no line coloring. Um, but before we get into story time, I just wanted to touch base on um, last week I did a giveaway in one of my videos and I told you all to leave me your email address and not even realize you wouldn't be able to do that. And also what a terrible idea was to put that out in public. So that was totally my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I didn't even think about it when I was doing it. Um, but I, we did end up picking two winners. Uh, Peanut was not available when I was doing the picking, so I actually had my sisters pick. Um, and so they just scrolled randomly and then stopped on somebody's comment. So the first one to win was Jinky Dog, and the second one to win was Carol Alanis. Um, I did respond back to both of their comments on that video. Um, I have heard from the first winner. I have not heard from the second. So Carol, if you're watching this, send me um, your email <laughs> because I, um, I need it in order to get your um, snail mail address to mail this thing to you. Well, for Eric to mail this thing to you. Let's be real. Um, so yeah, now that that's out of the way, as far as story time goes, I mean, we've really just been crazy with the holidays like everybody else um, because we work in public service. So for me, I would have had to work um, Christmas Day this year. Um, and Eric also had to work Christmas Day since I'm not back to work and I'm still on maternity leave. I was off, but he did have to go in. And, you know, Peanut has three families. So his... 
um, my ex-husband and his family and then Eric's family and then my family. So trying to get this child around to see everybody's family for the holidays is already very challenging. And then, you know, you add in um, a newborn. It, well, technically she's an infant now because we're, she's at seven weeks. Um, it just adds, you know, just another layer of doing um, that has to be done. <laughs> so what we ended up doing was splitting Christmas Eve because that was the day that we had peanut this year. Um, we spent the morning uh, afternoon with Eric's family. They came to us, which was very nice of them to do the traveling so that we could save the time traveling and it let us see them for longer um, just because they live like an hour away. So they came to us and everybody does things differently. Like holidays are so interesting to me to see people's different traditions and I loved hearing about, you know, your guys's and, and what you do. But Eric's family, they open one gift at a time. That's, you know, I mean, they start with the youngest and then everybody opens one gift at a time and goes around. And then, you know, the next round, everybody opens one gift at a time. And so consequently, it does take a little bit longer. Um, but then everybody gets to see everybody open each individual gift. At my parents' house, it is a free for all. Like we kick off with my sisters and I, like we exchange our gifts to each other first. And that's kind of always how we do it. Um, and then from there everybody just opens their things so you don't get to see every present opened um but it does get it kind of I don't want to say over and done with because that's not the point but then you're not sitting there for hours and hours on end um you know waiting to start dinner or waiting to start lunch or or, or whatever um so that's kind of how we do it we did like I said the brunch with his like early early dinner liner what do you want to call that um we ate at like 2 30 <laughs> so whatever that is we ate dinner at like 2 30 um with eric's family and then we went over to my parents house so that nathan could see um you know my sisters and my parents for christmas um and that was it was very nice to see everyone and then christmas morning uh, we did our own Christmas here. Once Nathan's dad picked him up, then we went down um, to my parents. And that's just kind of where I hung out for the day. Oh, something of note on the card here. So this particular wreath doesn't have, um, is not completely full all the way around. It's kind of got like the empty loop just there on the right hand side. If you want to outline that, I have a tip, which is don't stop. So when you start the outline, don't stop your line until you get to your end point or relatively close to it. Because if you stop your line on that curve, you will almost always be able to see it and your circle will not be perfect. So when you are going through that, and that applies to really any circle that you're doing um, or any line that you're drawing, like don't stop until you get to a good stopping point, whether that's where it meets another object or it's the end of the line, like don't pick your pencil back up because you're never going to be able to put it down in exactly the same spot and it's going to end up wonky. So I did add some shading to the leaves um, since they're kind of tucked behind everything. I did not add any shading to the flowers. I just picked one solid color and I went with that and then all the centers were um, that bright, I think it's called sunshine yellow. Um, just to kind of make it a little bit easier, I did spend more time shading the bunnies, which you'll see here shortly. Um, but for the wreath, I just didn't really think it was necessary. And then for um, the stems, like which connects everything, I alternated between that dark teal color and a dark green. Um, just because sometimes, you know, the stem that was coming off of it was coming off of a leaf that was teal and a stem that was coming off of it was coming off of a leaf that was... Um, that more traditional green and so I just kind of mixed it up uh, I don't think it's terribly noticeable in the wreath and I'm okay with that you know how I like my color variation I couldn't just do all the leaves one color I mean honestly how would I survive um, so now we're um, we're gearing up for some birthdays 
my niece and my nephew both have um, earlier December birthdays, so they get their birthday gifts usually on Christmas as well. Uh, but my sister's birthday is actually today, the 27th. Um, and then we would always do Graham's birthday. Um, and this year, you know, obviously we won't be doing that. Not that she didn't have a good 90 years. She did. Um, but so we'll do my sister Michelle's birthday and then um, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Normally we try to set apart a different day for Michelle's birthday but since we're already getting together so much in like that short two week period between or that short one week period between Christmas, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, we just decided this year that we're going to celebrate her birthday on New Year's Eve. And most of the time we all just like bring appetizers to my parents' house. Everybody kind of makes something so nobody, everybody does a little so nobody has to do a lot kind of thing. So now that the wreath is done, we're going to move on to coloring the bunnies and these little hearts. I chose to go with the pink purple combination that I used for um, the flowers for the little hearts. These probably aren't necessary, but I wanted to use them to fill up a little bit of that open space in the wreath. Um, I knew I was going to have my bunny setting on the wreath and then there was going to be open area above it. Um, you could put a sentiment there that would work as well but the sentiment that I wanted to use because I thought it was so cute it says Eskimo kisses and sweet bunny wishes isn't that adorable it is um I knew it wouldn't fit in that space so I needed to fill it up with something else and rather than use you know sequins or gemstones um these little hearts are included in the set and they have the matching dies that go with it so I figured that would be a good um space filler for me as far as the coloring of the bunnies goes, I decided that I was going to do the smaller one a lighter color and then the bigger one a darker color. I thought that it would, since it was larger, it would stand up to more shading. Um, this color I'm using right here is actually called Shell Pink, but it really looks like a beige. And I just went in and did kind of like small circles to fill in um, that whole bunny and it looks super blobby which is always the thing with no line coloring like blobs everywhere it's a very technical term blobby um but you create that definition by how you do your shading so now it's like one big blob but we're going to go in with the next color which is a warm brown and then i'm going to start by adding my shading so that i can get some of my detail back um, you know, separating the arms, separating the ears. Uh, I did his little face. I did end up going back and making his um, face using a darker brown to do the face. Um, but I separated his little feet at the bottom and then shaded, you know, where like where his head meets his neck and things like that. This I'm not doing the little circles so much as I am um, kind of doing short little strokes. With colored pencil, the magic of them is building up the color. And this is really where I get <laughs> the most impatient um, because I don't have to necessarily do that with my Copics. I go over them twice and then I'm done with it. Colored pencils are a little bit more finicky for me. Um, and so I added a little bit of shading to it and then I'm gonna go back in and blend that out with my lightest color. And then I'll go back in with my dark to add another layer of shading. And then we'll talk about like achieving the, the texture when we get to that point. Um, so for New Year's Eve, I, I think I told you guys before, I always spend it with my parents. If I'm off work last year, I worked, so I didn't see anybody. Um, Nathan was with his uh, dad, with, his, with my ex-husband. Um, and so Eric worked, I worked. This year Eric is also working, um, so I'll be spending it with my family celebrating my sister's birthday, which is exciting. Normally for her birthday, I usually, she loves purses. Um, I am a terrible purse person. I actually got a purse for Christmas from my mom, but I also had gotten one from my sister for my birthday because my purse is falling apart. <laughs> like I've had my purse for probably like five or six years back when I worked um, at the previous police department I had this purse that I had honestly for like 
10 years and it was falling apart and the strap had broken and I just like knotted it back together and all the leather was peeling off and it was just, it was a mess. So like my other sister, my middle sister, like loves like coach purses and, and all of these, you know, like brand Michael Kors and, um, you know, God bless her that that's what she, you know, she wants to spend her money on. Never even occurs to me to spend money on a purse. Nope. As long as I can, you know, Eric made me weigh it when I was pregnant because we were going all the time um, and doing the weight. He made me weigh it. It weighs 10 pounds. Is a 10 pound purse. Um, hold on. We're going to go back to the card. So here, in order to get the texture, I'm going back over all of my shading once I'm happy with it with um, my middle color and then some white. Um, just doing like little flicks or strands to create this fur like texture. I did go over some of the um, lines, you know, to make it look like the bunny was a little bit fuzzier. If you find that you do this and it's a little too textured for you, you can always go back over it lightly with your lightest color and kind of blend it out a little. Um, and I'm going to do this for both of my bunnies to get my, my fur texture to make them look a little fuzzy. Like I said earlier, with the larger bunny, I knew that I wanted um, it to be a little bit darker so that there was some uh, difference. So in addition to the same two colors I used for the smaller bunny, I will also be adding a much darker brown, but I'll be following the same process, filling it in with my lightest color, going back in and adding my shading, blending that back out, and then adding any more shading that I need to. So purses. Um, yeah, I eventually got rid of that purse because one of the guys at work literally cut the straps off. Like he'd cut the straps off. He for I had to carry it out like a bowling ball or I carried a watermelon. Do you know what movie's that from? If you know what movie I carried a watermelon is from, we can be friends because it's my favorite movie. But anywho, so I had to carry my purse out of work like that that night and it forced me to get another purse. Um, <laughs> so I just, um, I just have all of my things in there and it's such a pain to clean out and so I never even think to do it. But she loves purses. She loves the color red. Um, so usually I end up getting her you know, like a purse or some clothes or something like that. This year, a little bit different. This year, um, she was actually over here visiting uh, Miss Caitlin and we had been gifted a shelf um, from Eric's aunt, I think it was. No, lies. It was from Eric's um, parents' friends that were moving. They had like this little two-tier shelf uh, that had like a leather... Um, top to it which clearly they used it as a plant stand because there was this huge circle that was water damage on the top um and my sister had commented that it was such a cute shelf and I was like well we got it for free like if you tell me what you want done to it it's yours well she did not tell me what she wanted done to it um but I decided that's what I was going to give her for her birthday that I was going to redo the shelf so I had no idea, this is going to sound so wild to you, my sister, <laughs> because she was like redoing her house, she wouldn't let anybody into her house. So I've only ever just been like kind of in the threshold, but she doesn't have like people over, which everybody's different, no judgment. Um, but so I wasn't really sure since she had started redoing it, what colors were in her house. So I legitimately had to stalk her boyfriend's Facebook page because he shares pictures where she does not. She's very private um, to see what her family room looked like. And then I even went a step further and stalked her Pinterest to see if she had like pinned any colors or anything. And fortunately for me, she had. So that's how I picked the color scheme for this shelf in the hopes that it will match her family room and she will be able to use it. Now, if I totally missed um, and it doesn't match at all, like obviously I'll repaint it, but like all of her woodwork is white. So I went with a white um, base for it and then we cut off the leather. Well, Eric did because I'm scared of knives. Um, Eric cut off the leather on top and we pulled it out, um, sanded and wood filled like the wood underneath and sealed that up. And then um, I painted it. It's, oh, it's called Gingham by Bear. Uh, and I imagine that that color immediately brings to mind um, like a lighter gray blue, which is the color that it is. 
Um, and so I painted the shelves that and the top I'm doing like a buffalo check um, with a gray, a white and this, you know, bluish gray color. Um, so I'm excited to see that. I have not peeled off the paint uh, painter's tape yet for how you do the gingham to see what it looks like completely. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Worst case scenario, if it looks like total trash, I'll just sand it down and paint it, you know, one solid color. Um, but again, just like with card making, no risk, no reward. So if I don't try to do something that's a little bit more challenging, I'll never know if it's going to work. I did do, um, back to the card, I did do the same thing with this as far as like doing the strokes and getting the texture, um, you know, and then just kind of went back through and added any more shading where I thought that I needed it. I didn't mention it with the little bunny, but I will mention it here. Um, the inside of their ears, I did color pink, um, and then blended that back in with that, um, seashell color, which really looks like a beige, um, just to you know, make it look cohesive so that they both had like this little bit of pink. Um, I really love the way that they look on this gray. I knew that I wanted to use color and I always default to craft when I'm doing um, colored pencils, but I thought that it would be fun to kind of switch it up and I wanted the bunnies to stand out so I didn't want to do them on craft, but I'm really digging the gray. Tell me what you think. Like, do you prefer craft? Um, to do like the colored pencil coloring on or are you down for like gray or maybe black or a navy like you tell me what colors you're into here I'm going ahead and put my dies in place I'm going to spare you me putting these little teeny tiny um heart dies on because it did take me a second to get them positioned since they're a little bit smaller and then I just ran them through um my platinum from spellbinders to cut them out and these really do cut relatively close. And um, I knew, again, like the, my card base was gonna be gray as well. I'm gonna go ahead and heat emboss um, my sentiment. I could have done it in black. It's not a dark enough gray that that would have been problematic. But since I didn't have any black outline anywhere else, I opted to do um, some heat embossing in white. And I do like the way that that looked. I could have just stamped it right down on the card base, but I wanted to pop up my bunnies and even my hearts, I know, because I'm a psychopath, um, on foam tape. And so I thought popping up the sentiment would also give it a little bit of added dimension since it was like gray on gray on gray. Um, I feel like that's pretty much, you know, what everybody's kitchen looks like for the last, I don't know, five years. There's gray everywhere, gray and white. Um, and I say that knowing that mine is like the subway tile and um, gray flooring, white cupboards, like that's what my kitchen looks like too. <laughs> so I'm not judging you if yours looks like that. That just happened to be super trendy and that's what my kitchen was when we moved into this house um, and I loved it. So here I'm gluing the wreath down flat um, and then, I'm like I said, I'm going to add foam tape to everything else and kind of pop it up. The little hearts, the little foam pieces are very, very tiny um, and I kind of had to trim them um, quite a bit so that you couldn't see behind them. But I really enjoyed um, doing something different and kind of challenging myself and it's fortunate when it works out that way. Um, that you know you end up with a card you're happy with but sometimes you try new techniques and you don't end up with anything that you love but that's okay because you end up with the experience and the knowledge of what went wrong or what you don't like and sometimes that's worth it as well. Once all of the um, adhering was done I did go back in right on top of my colored pencil and add just a little bit of clear shimmer and then that's it that's the whole card. So um Carol, if you're watching, send me an email, uh, but also make sure you check out that sale uh, for my favorite things. The link is below if you're watching on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.